Right, so let's look at our Open Forensics lab. So what we're going to try and do is examine uh, a raw disk copy to see if we can understand the, the format and also to be able to extract some files from it. So we're going to be using this uh, disk image and if possible we're going to try and do it in both Linux Kali and with inside Windows. So I'll just power on Linux Kali image here. And I just open up the console and get ready. Okay, and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to open up Uh, so I've downloaded OpenSleuth, the OpenSleuth toolkit. And I've installed that into this folder here. Okay, so the executables are actually in the bin folder. Uh, so, for example, that one. So if you don't want to have to navigate to there all the time and enable it for any folder, then just actually to find it in your path. So find the path variable and just add in, uh, in this case I've added in sl slash bin. That will mean that I can open up the console and then run the open sleuth toolkit commands from anywhere. So just let me get logged into Kali here. Okay, so the so the first thing that we're actually going to do, I've, I've downloaded the first file, which is our first raw file, and that's from a, a Canon camera. Uh, so we'll have a look at that in terms of one hex. Great little program to be able to analyze our binary content. So one thing to notice is that we have 5A there. Okay, so uh, we can do things like uh, search using this uh, we can search for uh, hex hex values so let's search for a jpeg there we go there's a jpeg there possibly search for another one there's another one with fd and and so on okay so we can search for strings and we can also search for uh, hex values okay and we can search through that so the first partition that we have is actually here okay so we go here uh, we find the first fir first partition. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at a little program to be able to determine the format of the master boot record of the the partition with inside the master boot record. Okay, so the master boot record in this case is quite unusual because the magic numbers at the end of the first 512 byte block. So there's 256 bytes and then another one there. So let's feed that value in and let's, let's see what it's going to give us. So 00, 01, 14, 00, 00, 00, 00, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. <laughs> and there we go. Okay, so this shows us that it's non bootable. Okay, that's the first uh, sector for the uh, header, the, the first header number. Okay, so if you remember some of these numbers, there's 51 there for the number of sectors preceding that partition. And then there's that one. 51 will actually find is the place for our first partition, okay? Sector 51 is that key place that we're going to be looking for, and this is the length of the sector here. 
Okay, so that allows us to be able to look at the at the sector. So the first thing we're going to do in the lab is we're going to use the MMLS command. And so MML, MMLS allows us to be able to look at the partitions. So we can see here that the T list, minus T list, allows us to look at the partition types. In this case we have a DOS partition. And then Just open up our raw file, and there we go. Okay, there's 51 there, and there's that length that we have of the partition. And just let's check. Okay, 67949, perfect. Okay, and that's made up of this value here. If we were to feed that into our calculator, we would hopefully find... We'll just look at our scientific, we'll just look at our programming calculator. We'll feed in our hex value 4D ED234. Oh, wrong way around. Zero, 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 zero. E D four D. Let's try that again. E D four D. And there we have. Okay. So it's a it's a little Indian format. Okay, the smallest byte appears first, and that's the most significant byte. Okay, so this value here gives you the number of partitions actually in the in the sector. This value here gives you the number of sectors that precedes the partition. So in this case we have 00000033. Uh, so that's just 33, which is 51. Okay, so we'll look at this value. That's the most significant byte, least significant byte, and convert that into an integer to give you that. Then look at this uh, word, and then that's most significant byte, least significant byte, 33. Okay? So that is the way that you can interpret the master boot, uh, the, the partition within the master boot record. Okay, so let's do the same in Kali Linux. So let's see if I can just pull up a browser. Just do a quick copy and paste. I'm just going to save that. And I'll save it into the desktop. Okay, that was quick. Head fast. There we go. There's a raw file there. Uh, so you should find the same commands are on there. We'll just get rid of this browser. I don't really need it now. And we'll just put them side by side so that you can actually see that the outputs are the same. And we'll do MLS minus T DOS. Oops. There we go. Okay, zero 04 is the 
is the fat is fat 16, and we uh, we can identify the 0, 4 here. Okay, that that gives us our file format. Okay, so we can see the star and the end for that. So the first sector is 51. So if you remember 51, 51 over here. So let's actually see if we can just put them side by side. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll just do the same commands. And you should be able to see that uh, we get the same results. Great open source package. So the next one is that we want to have a look at the inodes. So the inodes will allow us to do uh, to actually have a look at the inodes on the system. So we start, so the minus O option is this one there. Okay. And we'll do ILS minus O. minus F. So on this one we can look at the we can look at the options. So in this case we have uh, our fat 16. So we're going to start at sector 51. We're going to do fat 16. And we can actually have a meta format or raw format. In this case, it's raw. We'll go for it. Okay. So that's now showing us uh, what the inode numbers are, and then the details of the the files. So this is the, the this is what we note over here, and then we will just do the same command over here. Hopefully we can copy and paste. Let's give that a try. There we go. Okay, so now let's look at the iStat. iStat is going to give us the details of these inodes. Okay, and then we're going to look at the detail of node 1029. We can see it's an image file. We can tell when it was written, when it was last accessed and when it was created. And here's the sectors that are actually involved. So we'll do the same over here. 1029. And let's look at ice that. That's perfect. Okay, so there's 1030. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, inode 2, and we'll see inode 2 is actually the the directory inode, and inode 3 is a volume label. Okay, so again it gives you the, the, the basic uh, details of when it was accessed and created and so on. Now what we'll do is we'll have a look at the file names that are involved. So it's FAT16 and it's a raw format. And there we go. Okay, so it shows us our directory structure and then the file, the inodes and the names of the files involved. So we can do the same again over here in our Kali Linux. Okay, got the same same output again. So now what we want to do is to look at the timeline of activity that's actually involved in this. So what we can do is that we can actually define 
the a minus m minus m option. Let's have a look over here. Okay, so the minus n option is giving us the uh, output mac time to to convert this these times into into proper times that we can actually analyze, and then we'll uh, do that from the the slash directory uh, as the as the mount point. Okay, so we'll do that, and then we'll just output it to body to text. Okay, so if you want to have a look, this is what it looks like. Okay, uh, there's a list with a whole lot of numbers that are going to be translated to things, but we can see there that gives us our deleted files. Now what we're going to do is that you should in install uh, something like Active, Active Peril on your machine. Okay, so download that and you should have it all ready to go. So I'm going to run this Mac time. So it's in bin. There it's there. It's just a just a Perl script, and it's going to convert our body text file. into something that's more readable, such as in a spreadsheet. OK, so that's all, all going to open automatically. Uh, so some of the times are wrong there, but you can see these ones are actually correct. On the 23rd of December 2008, these images were deleted. And we can actually see when things were created from the, the timeline. Okay, so there you go, that's a, that's a volume directory. And then we see the images from, from there that have been deleted. Okay, so we can do the same over here. So let's run that command. First one. In Kali Linux. Okay, and then for the next one, I think we can run Mac time on its own. And we can. So it's Mac time minus B body text minus D so minus D converts it to a comma separated file format uh, I don't think we have a spreadsheet installed spreadsheet package installed so just have a look at it in, in notepad It doesn't have to be notepad, it can be VI or Nano, something like that. Okay, so that's just the same file, but uh, obviously we're not rendering it in a spreadsheet. So the last thing we're going to actually do is to extract one of these deleted files from the, the raw image. Okay, so 51. And we'll take it from there. So iCat's going to carve it out. Okay, we'll have a look at iCat over here. Okay, we can define that image format if we want with the minus i. But let's try to just extract it without that option. Actually, we'll just have a little look. Okay, it's just a raw format then. Okay, so we we'll do iCat 51, and we're going to start from uh, going to start from sector 51. 
sorry, with inode 10, 29. I'm going to put it into image 01.jpg. Oops, that should be a minus O in there. Okay, that's not our image. That's our image. Okay, so we'll just do the same over there just to show that it works in Kali Linux. Perfectly, and it's extracted all the metadata that goes along with the, the with the JPEG. Okay, so we'll just do a quick check, just to have a quick look. Okay, so we can open up uh, our WinHex, and we'll just have a quick look in the uh, in the SL folder for our image. There it is there. So FFD8. There we go. That's the that's the standard sign of a, of a JPEG. And there's the end. FFD9. Okay. So FFD8 is what we're looking for. And there's the image there. Okay, so that is that image. There's the Canon per shot. So with inside this um, this this raw file, this is what it's managed to extract. If we then look again, we should be able to find the second image. There it's there. Okay, so as we look through, then uh, hopefully we should be able to see the images actually on the disk. Uh, and all the metadata that's actually in there. Okay, so now I go ahead and actually have a look at the next, the next file format, which is actually this one here. So for the next part, let's do some file carving. So what normally happens is that we read our disk and then we look for a magic number. And then the file carving package will take from there until it hits the end of the uh, the end tag and carve the whole file out. So let's have a look at some sample, some sample magic files numbers. So a uh, typical one is uh, JPEG, FFD8. Okay, so this file here starts with FFD8, and there's the header metadata and so on. Okay, so we start with that and then we look towards the end of it. So have a look at the other types that we actually have. But with Scapo we have uh, a configuration file. And the configuration file actually defines the, the, the file formats that we're going to carve. Okay, so if we don't put a comment in here, then it will carve from there. So then a GIF file is GIF89A, and then the end of a GIF is 003B hexadecimal. So there's a there's a PNG, TIFF, and movie files, MP3, documents, PDFs. So we'll, we'll carve out some PDFs. Uh, percent PDF is the is the standard for that. Uh, this number here defines the maximum number of bytes that will be read before. If it doesn't hit the end of the the tag then that will be the maximum number of bytes it will read because we've got to watch that there are 
parts missing and it could create massive files. Okay, so that's our scalpel.config. So we'll actually have a go at, uh, at extracting that. So we have a DD, so a DD image of our disk, this one here. And then what we'll do is we'll run scalpel. We'll define an output folder and then we'll car for our DD file. Okay, let's try and find the program. Let's create another folder. Okay, so that's done that. So working, it's given us a whole lot. There's the done GIF, JPEG, doc, PDF, and so on. And there we go. So let's have a look at uh, our folder. So the great thing is that it actually has, a, has an audit tool in it to give us the details of what the configuration was when we, when we extracted it. And then it will give us the output as to what documents it's carved, what their length were, whether it had to chop them or not. So you can see these ones have got problems from here, but these ones seem to have extracted quite well. Okay, so it's, it orders them nicely for us. We'll go into the PDF folder. We'll have a look at the PDFs it's produced. Okay, not much in there might not have uh, extracted that very well. We'll have a look at some JPEGs. And that certainly looks like a, like a JPEG. So we'll do the same with our Kali Linux. Okay, so let's, let's download our file again, our new one. This one first. Okay, so just as we did before, we'll put it on the desktop, and that's great. And that's all finished. It's very quick. Okay, just watch that. That's a one one. Not an LL. Okay, so there's our DD file. So again, we'll just do what we did over here. We just uh, scalpel, see if it's on here, and it is. Because Kali Linux has got such great scope in the tools that's installed. So I'll just call it the same file. So, first thing we want to do is to find the uh, the config file. So, if we do a where is and it's a scalpel.conf. Okay, so let's. Uh, OK, 
Okay, so there's a scaffold cap scaffold.com thing there. Well, we'll have a look to see if we can find from there. So let's have a quick look to see what's in user bin, just to see if there's a config file in there. And there isn't, so I think we're fine here. Okay, so what we're going to look for Okay, we'll look for some G GIF files and a JPEGs Let's find, let's try some BMPs and PNG and uh, doc PDFs. Oops. So let's start. Let's start again. So let's let's give it a new folder name. Okay, so remember you can just remove your your old folders with that one. Uh, I think it was both three we created. Okay, so that's that's what. Let's have a look in uh, there, and we can see it's done what it did the last time. And there's our output. So obviously gives a slightly different output. It's shown the, uh, the command. Just let's see what version we're running over here. It's interesting. You, you've always got to, to have a look at the scalpel version that you're using. Uh, they they do tend to vary quite a bit. That's scalpel two, and that's one point six. Okay, that's a bit older that one. And we'll have a look at JPEG files. Easier to look at this in terms of the of the file viewer. So my my uh, right click isn't working very well. Okay, so we can see there are images in them. That one looks like a fish. Okay, so that's shown uh, scalpel.
for that. Uh, you can see that some of the images didn't come through quite well. I think a key thing to, to really look for is the uh, is to be able to look in one hex and to be able to identify files from the magic numbers. Okay, so that's uh, the one there that we're interested in. And remember what we did. We searched for FF or we could search for a certain string that we know, ASCII value. In this case there's no PDF in there. Okay, so that's showing you how you run this lab.